Hello ladies and gentlemen, in this video I'm taking a look at Tails, the Amnesic Incognito Live System, a Linux distribution which aims to get you on the Tor network as quickly and simply as possible. The Tor network being the onion rooting network or the dark net according to certain news outlets, but uh, no, this has a legitimate purpose, offering a multiple layer encryption which sends you out of a different point on the internet. How much of a different point? Well, let's go for a geolocation and we can take a look. And you can also take a look at the speed here because while it is slower than a direct connection on the internet, I have to say this speed isn't bad at all. And we can soon find out the route I'm taking, but yeah, let's just go for a little geolocation. And my IP address is currently 185.220 blah blah. Yeah, that's not my IP. And I'm coming out of the Netherlands. So, hello everyone in Amsterdam. I am coming out of the end point there. Or maybe I'm coming out of Germany. Who knows? <laughs> or even the United Kingdom. Yeah, it really doesn't have any idea, does it? But yeah, I can take a look at the route I'm taking. And, and it becomes apparent that my internet connection is being dotted around quite a bit. So yeah, this is basically how Tor works. You peel off layers of an onion which have the next node that you're connecting to. The multiple layers of encryption mean that you don't know who sent the original packet or where its destination is going. So while there is criminal abuse of the network, it does have some legitimate purposes, allowing whistleblowers to communicate, communication for journalists and circumventing blocking. And I'll come on to more about the blocking later. So I'll take a general look around distribution first, and I'm actually running it as a live ISO file. And I believe this is the use case the creators had intended for it as a live operating system. So we kind of want to get a good idea of the programs that we have. Are they going to be suitable for what we need? And actually you can adjust this later on. So the folder structure, there is a specific folder for the tool browser because this is the only folder the Tor browser has access to. So if you're downloading anything, this is where it ends up. You can't put it in your downloads folder or your documents folder. No, they're actually inaccessible to the browser. In a way, it's sandboxed to a specific folder structure. The graphics, where well, you can do a bit of graphics editing if you want, with GIMP and Inkscape. Internet, well, they've given you the Electrum Bitcoin wallet. The onion circuits are taken a look at, that's just your route around the Tor network. Onion share. So file sharing. The Onion Share creates an Onion service website, which is a website ending in .onion. So you're sharing the file from a web server running on your system. And you can stop sharing automatically as soon as a single file has been downloaded. So you would get a link that you can share with someone else via instant messaging or email, and they can download the file from your system. <laughs> Encrypted file transfer. So you get Pigeon Internet Messenger, Thunderbird email, you get an unsafe browser and the Tor browser. The Tor browser is based on Firefox extended support release. Office got a full suite of LibreOffice. And the sound of videos got an audio player, video player, and actually a means of editing videos with Traverso. Under the Tails folder, we have an installer and the ability to create persistent volumes, delete persistent volumes, access to documentation, or more like a link to the documentation. But I found it all fairly straightforward to use. Although I did have a couple of questions, so I did have to look at the documentation for that, and that had more to do with the coming out of a specific point on the Tor network. It's something I was interested in, and I'll show you that in a moment. This is a look at the system monitor, so I'm running it as a live image, so about one and a half gig of memory in use, so memory requirements aren't too horrific. And performance has been perfectly fine. And there's the activities overview of the GNOME desktop. Perhaps I would have liked a different desktop, but for something that's going to be used in this way as a live operating system, look, all I'm interested in using is the Tor browser. That's it. Looking at the user agent of the Tor browser, it identifies as Windows NT 6.1, so that is Windows 7, and Firefox version 60. So you would have no idea that I'm running the Tor browser. Popping the window into full screen does give you this warning that maximizing the Tor browser can allow websites to determine your monitor size, which can be used to track you. Very true. Recommend you switch it back to the original size. Yeah, fair enough. In the Tor browser, we have no scripts installed, as well as uBlock Origin and HTTPS everywhere. One use case of Tor is to circumvent blocking. 
the blocking of European visitors not being able to access certain American websites due to, well, in the UK we call it GDPR, the EU General Data Protection Regulation. There's another warning here from the Tor browser about HTML5 canvas image data. So yeah, that is actually another possibility of tracking as well. So we can block. Anyway, I was going to say about GDPR, it's more requiring consent from the visitors that the level of data that they're agreeing to hand over is necessary to what the purpose is for the data. If you don't need personal data about someone, then you shouldn't be taking it. I know my explanation is far too vague, but it really isn't that complicated to comply with. But anyway, certain American websites have decided that no, they're not going to bother trying to comply at all and of just locking out European visitors. For example, the New York Daily News. Now here's where controlling the exit country could really come into use. So I can request a new identity, or a new endpoint, but if I come out in another European country, I'm still not going to be able to visit that website, and it appears that I have. And I've had this a few times, so yeah, it can be a bit frustrating. I know there's a config file you can edit to specify to come out into certain countries, but it would be really nice to have that ability through the graphical user interface. And I'm sure the older version of Tails did have that ability. Ah, there we go, I've got an exit point that is outside of Europe. Let's take a look where I am. And it appears that I've come out in Moldova. So yeah, perfectly fine, and I can now access the New York Daily News, should I have been that desperate to get there. But yeah, it really makes a mockery of the whole GDPR thing. Totally unnecessary to do all that. Anyway, there's a final thing I mentioned. So going back to applications, looking under internet, you'll see that there is no torrent client. The reasoning for that is they don't want you torrenting on the Tor network. It was never built for that. There is a limitation in the bandwidth. So yeah, they don't want it wasted with people torrenting. Although I appreciate that is something we would normally expect in the Linux distribution for the legitimate purposes of downloading a Linux distribution. <laughs> they even provide tails in the form of a torrent file. The notification about upgrades is very prompt, so even if you're running a version like this where you're not actually installing it, you'll still get a notification that there's an update, and yeah, it advised me that I would have to download a new version. There was no way I could upgrade a live system, which is correct. So that was a look at Tails. Now I can certainly appreciate it for what it is, getting you onto the Tor network as quick as possible. For an average day-to-day -day system, no, it's not really necessary. There's quite a selection of applications pre-installed on here, but realistically you wouldn't want to be browsing the Tor network for everything. It's just that little bit too slow. Although I will say I didn't really find the speed issue too bad. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all later.